Those are revolutionary words. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from the one who died for you and for me, and who was raised to life on the third day, never to die again. I'd like you to imagine for a moment of living in a society or a religion or a culture where the belief was that bad things happen to you because of something you did wrong. A culture that was bent on finding the correlation between some suffering and something that you did that was at fault in your life. Jesus lived in such a culture. So for instance, there was a time when his disciples were with Jesus and they encountered a man who had been born blind and they said, Jesus, this man was born blind either because of his own sin or because of the sin of his parents. Which, which was it? And Jesus said, neither. Now imagine that. His disciples were locked in a system of belief that those were the only two options they could actually see or imagine. And what Jesus did instead was he went on to heal the man who had been born blind. He spit on the ground. He mixed the spit with mud. He put it on the man's eyes, and he told him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which simply means the pool that sends you. It was ascending for this man, and he, and he was healed. It's not about finding fault. It's about showing compassion. Deborah from Eternal Anchor just a few weeks ago reminded us that attributing suffering, suffering to someone's own doing still exists. Now, living in such a system, how would it sound to have a rabbi come along and overturn the apple cart altogether? What would it do for your heart to hear that there's a fountain of blessedness for the downtrodden? Well, Christ has a word for us this morning. A few years ago, Claire and I were over at Jason and Shell Galbraith's home, and in their kitchen, this was hanging on the wall. And it's a, it's a barometer, and Jason would explain to me how the barometer can simply indicate a change in the pressure, a, a new front coming in, and the pressure in the vase changes, and you can be forewarned that there's a change in the weather pattern. Something's happening. Uh, there's an unseen barometer inside each and every one of us, one that moves up and down with the changes in life's pressure systems and the winds of circumstance. And with this unseen barometer, we sense the pressure, making assumptions regarding who God is, our divine connection, or our blessedness. Where do you go when the pressure rises? When health, when finances, 
when circumstances, when even your own vehicle seems to have turned against you. Christ has a word for us this morning. Hear the heartbeat of God in the words Jesus spoke, words of blessing for us when life seems to have turned against us, when life's pressure systems exert their force in our minds and our hearts. In a world enmeshed in spoken and sometimes unspoken caste systems, where the untouchables are discarded and forgotten, the appraisal of God comes and says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for there's an entire kingdom that belongs to these. In a world where the hungry and hurting are seen as cursed, the announcement of God comes and says, blessed are you who hunger and thirst for making things right. You'll be satisfied. In a world of loss and sorrow and tragedy, the consolation of Israel comes and says, take heart, you will yet be comforted. In a world that exercises exclusion and insult and blame, the affection of God comes and says, this does not measure or moderate God's favor in your life. It's as though Jesus, right from the start, was teaching his followers not to use the lens of circumstance to determine God's wild favor and pulsing love and passion. See the world with new eyes. As though you're Eyes were being remade with with mud and divine spit and water that sends us. Jesus once said, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be good. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be filled with darkness. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that people can see or experience the very same thing, but sometimes come to vastly different conclusions. Our lens, our perception, is a powerful thing because it colors and interprets and really lights everything. Blessed are. There's something transformational from the inside out about recognizing blessing when we've assumed that we have been ones who are left out. Think back to the parable of the prodigal son. We'll fast forward from the first part and get to the end. The end of Jesus' brief story is an older brother who has assumed he's been left out of the father's goodness and blessing. And in fact, instead of seeing himself as a son to the father, he saw himself as a slave. He said to the father, I have slaved for you all these years. And the father said, my son, everything I have is yours. Everything the father had was already his son's, but his perception was bad, and it colored all of his body. When we see, when we perceive we're among the blessed, we're transformed. God gives a new barometer to interpret the pressure systems around us. And it's wrapped in the person of Jesus. He holds the power to heal our broken, skewed perceptions of who God is when the pressures mount and we think that life has turned against us. Now these words that we call the Beatitudes, Luke also records them in his gospel, but he adds, after the the words of blessing, he adds words of woe or or warnings that Jesus speaks. These internal barometers, our assumptions and perceptions, are powerful. So powerful that when we misread the barometer, we see things with bad eyes, we can be deceived, and it's our own doing. Warning to you who are rich, to the well-fed, to those who laugh and are spoken of well. In other words, warning to the privileged who attribute their comfort and position to having done things right. It's a faulty assessment, just the inverse of the previous. There's little space for grace in that scenario, not because it isn't given, it's just that it isn't received. It has to do with our eyes, our perceptions and beliefs, our vantage points and how we see things. 
The story of the Exodus, God's people living in bondage to slavery in Egypt for 400 years, and then they were liberated through Moses. It's incredibly good news, but not for everyone. Not if you were the oppressor, not if you were Pharaoh, not if you had built a culture and a system on the backs of others. Then their liberation would have sounded distasteful to your ears and hearts. Warning, it's possible to hear good news as bad news if you have bad eyes, the wrong perception. The Egyptian barometer would see this God as being against them, but this God of the Hebrews is also the God of the Egyptians. This God favors all people. This God brings blessing to everyone. It's just that our barometers need to be reset. If our eyes are good, our whole body will be full of light. But if our eyes are bad... Our body will be filled with darkness. There's a warning in carrying around the wrong assumptions and skewed perceptions. We'll conclude things about God and others and ourselves that will be less than good and true and beautiful. There can be a celebration put on by God himself, and it can be seen as distasteful, like the elder brother in Jesus' story. The warnings are so that we don't miss the blessing God's given us, so that we don't view the culture of God, the kingdom of God, as ugly when it's right in front of us in dazzling array. Jesus wants to heal our eyes, to have us see the heart of God for us, even if our barometers are saying otherwise. Where do you go when the pressure's rising? Jesus would have us hold a different barometer altogether, one that takes the shape of a cross, cruciform shape, adamantly announcing the forgiveness in favor of God. If you've ever been without means, hungered for something more, tasted the sting of loss, sensed the slash of exclusion, in Jesus' name, you remain blessed. God's pleasure for you is untouchable and hidden away in Christ, and so is your life. Hear these strong words from Paul in 1 Corinthians. It's because of God that you're in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. And as my friend Greg Finke says, the business of restoring this fallen creation to its original beauty and perfection is God's alone. He chooses not to do his work alone. Like the man born blind, washing mud and spit in the pool, the waters of sending, in the waters of baptism, our eyes are made new, and we're washed, and we're sent. You and I were living barometers meant to display with our lives the God who blesses announcing and enacting blessing to a world experiencing the pressure systems of poverty and hunger and loneliness, loss and exclusion. This is what Jesus did and this is what Jesus does. Where do you go when the pressure rises? Our barometer is Jesus and his kindness knows no bounds. Amen. Thank you.